Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be solving the lead code question rotate array. Alright, so if you remember, I think a week ago I solved the question rotate list in which instead of an array, we were doing the same thing on a linked list. Okay, anyway, so let's just go on to this question. So given an array, rotate the array to the right by k steps, where k is a non-negative uh, value. Alright, so let's just take a look at an example over here. So over here we have this number. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and we have k equals 3. So what exactly is happening? So what we're doing in simple words is we're moving or doing a rotation for a total of three times. We're doing three rotations. And what happens in one rotation? So let's take a look at what happens at the first rotation. So in the first rotation, everything moves to the right by 1. So the 1 over here is going to go to the position of 2. So currently, 1 is going to be over here. Then after that, this 2 moves to the right by 1, and, it now, and it's now going to be over here. Similarly, the 3 is going to move to the right, and now it's going to be over here. Alright, so all of that is pretty simple to understand. You just move everything to the right. But now the question is, what happens once we reach 7? And the thing is, our number here is kind of in a cycle. And what that means is that once you go to 1 through 7, once you reach the last index, the last index connects back to the first index. So we're in a cyclical array over here, right? So after 7, so if we move it to the right, what's going to happen is it's going to go back over here. So the 7, after one rotation, is going to be in the position of whatever is at the 0th index, which in this case is 1. So hopefully you get what one rotation looks like, and all we're going to do is we're going to repeat it for a total of 3 times. So as you can see, first rotation, like I said, the 7, which was 0, comes over here. And the 6, which was 0 in the second rotation, comes over here. So each time we're moving to the right by 1, and that's pretty much what's happening. Okay, and uh, so as you can kind of just look at the question, the first thing that might come to your mind is, well, we can just like simulate the amount of rotations we have. If we have 10 rotations, we can just rotate it for a total of 10 times. We have 30 rotations, do the same thing. So that's the first solution that we're going to look at, and boom. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of look at the solution and kind of build off of that. All right, perfect. So let's just go down over here, and I'll go through this pretty quickly uh, because this is not the best solution. Actually, this is not even accepted, but I think understanding this will help us understand the question. Okay, so over here, what I did is I made a helper function, and the helper function over here is going to take a list, and this list over here is called L. All right, so after that, we have a value called the replacement value. So what this replacement value does is we're going to hold the value of whatever element we're currently on. And the reason that we're holding this value is because in our for loop, we're going to go to the next element, and we're going to make the next element have the value of this replacement value because the replacement value is 1 before. So if this is L0, we're going to go to L1, and we're going to make that the zero value of the replacement. Okay, then after that, we're going to also store the last value. And the reason we're doing that is because once the last val once we get to the last value, it's going to go all the way back to the very beginning. So we want to have that value stored somewhere. So after our for loop, we can kind of just incorporate that. And what's happening in this for loop is pretty simple. So we're storing the value of the next uh, number, right? So lx plus 1. And then what we're doing, after storing that the current value it has, we're replacing lx plus 1 with the replacement. And the replacement is nothing else but x. So this is lx plus 1. We're doing, the replacement is going to be lx. And finally, after that, we're going to change our replacement value with whatever the temporary value is over here. And it's important that we get the temporary value before we make the swap over here, or else we will not have the original value. So over here, what we're doing is we're always changing the next element. So we're going to start off at the zeroth index, but we're not actually going to change it. We're going to start changing everything from the first index because we start from zero plus one, and we're going to go all the way up to the ending. So everything from the first index to the ending is done, but the zeroth index is not changed. And the reason for that is because that reacts a little bit differently. So what we're doing over here is after our for loop, we're going to make the zeroth index have the last value which we stored in the beginning. Okay, and that over there is our helper function, and it's pretty simple. So we're going to call this for a total of k times since we're doing k rotations. Now there's a small problem over here. So what if we have a really massive k number or k value? Well, what if it's something like 10,000, right? That means we're making 10,000 rotations, which is uh, just absurd, right? It'll take a lot of time. So how can we kind of fix this and kind of decrease the number of times we want to call the helper function? So to do that, what we're going to do is let's just go back up over here. 
And let's just make a small observation. I'll be looking at example two over here. Um, and let's just focus on the number negative one. Okay, so uh, we'll, we'll be rotating the entire list, but I'm only gonna focus on negative one. So let's say we rotated one time. So in this case, negative one, which was over here, after one rotation, negative one is going to be over here. Now let's rotate for the second time. So now it's gonna be over here. Now for the third time, it's gonna be over here. And for the fourth time, it's gonna go all the way back over here. So the, the observation that we're trying to make is what over here is the length of our nums. So the length of nums is one, two, three, four. We have a length of four. And what that's basically telling us is once we make the same number of iterations as the length of whatever the nums is, we're gonna reach our original spot. And that makes sense because our area over here is nothing else but a cycle. And once we do the same number of iterations as the number or the length of our array, then in that case, we're always gonna return back to the minimum. So let's just rephrase that a bit. So in this case, the length is four. And so let's say we actually do zero rotations. And in that case, nothing's gonna change. And that makes sense. So, uh, but that value is also the same as doing four rotations because once you do four rotations, nothing actually changes. And that's the same as doing zero rotations. So instead of doing four, we would just rather do zero since zero doing zero rotations is a lot faster. Uh, similarly, that also applies for eight, 16, so on and so forth, uh, and basically all multiples of that number. So to kind of decrease that and uh, decrease the number of times we're calling the function, instead what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the length of our nums and we're gonna mod it with our k value. Then in that case, we're never gonna call it more than whatever the length of nums is. Okay, so this over here uh, makes sense, but the problem is this also gives us a time limit exceeded error. And the reason for that is because the area that we're getting is really big. And we kind of want to look for a different way. But one thing that we notice by doing this is I think we it, it makes it pretty clear about how this actually works. So kind of keeping that into mind, we can do one more observation. Now, a different way to look at this problem is, let, now let's just say we make three rotations. So first we would get this, then this, and then this. But a simpler way to look at it is that we're never changing the order of whatever the numbers actually are. So what we could actually do is we can find out what the first element is after we make how many other rotations it is that we need to make. And, and what exactly do I mean by that? So in this case, we wanna make three rotations. So over here, let's just ask ourselves the question, after three rotations, what over here is gonna be at the zero index? because once we know that, everything else just kind of falls into place. So in this case, we know it's the number five, but how do we get to that? And in order to get to that, get to that what we want to do is we first want to know how many rotations are we actually going to do. And we want to get that number, whatever the number of rotations are, to be less than whatever, whatever the length of nums over here is. And how do we do that? And we talked about that earlier. So in this case, uh, doing zero rotations is the same as doing four rotations or eight rotations and so on and so forth. And using that, we can kind of come up with the number of the number of rotations we want to make. So in simple words, we're doing length of nums, and then we're modding that with our k value. So when you do this over here, you would still have a value of three. So we're still doing three rotations over here. But now the question is, how do we know what comes over here? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna iterate through this in the opposite direction in order to find out what value is gonna be over here. So in the first iteration, this over here goes to the zeroth index. Then in the second iteration, the six is gonna be at the zeroth index. And in the third iteration, the five is going to be in the zeroth index. So we're just gonna go through it in reverse. And that's telling us that look five over here is going to be whatever is in the zeroth index. Now the question is, how do we build up our area from there? So we know for a fact that five is at the zeroth index, like you can see over here, but the rest of it is pretty simple. So since it always follows the same order, we know for a fact that everything to the right of five inside of nums is gonna come right next to it. So we have five and then we would have six and then seven. And as you can see in our answer, we have five, six, and seven. And everything else is just gonna be starting from the zeroth index up to five. So first we had five, then we had six and seven, as you can see here, and the rest of numbers are one, two, three, four, and we're just gonna go up to five. And we're just gonna add these numbers right after we add these numbers here. So five, six, seven, and then one, two, three, four. And that's exactly our answer. So hopefully you kind of understood how we actually reached to that conclusion. All right, so let's just see the code of this real quickly. So um, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna redefine our k function, or sorry, value. 
So the k value, we want it to be less than whatever the length of nums is, and we saw how to do that. So to do that, we're going to do k is equal to k mod length of nums. And a better way to just write this is we can get rid of this, and we can just write the moderator over here. Okay, all right, so we're going to be changing our entire nums area, so we can do that like that. And what is the beginning part of this going to be? So the beginning part of this is going to start off with whatever we found out to be at the zeroth index. So what value is actually going to be at the zeroth index after k rotations? So that value, we can get that by taking the length of nums and subtracting the k value that we found. So minus k. That is going to be our first value. And we're going to go all the way up to the ending. And the rest of this, so we're going to do plus. And the rest of this is going to be everything which starts at the zeroth index and goes up to this value over here. So let's just do that. So plus and then nums. And we're going to start off from the zeroth index and going to go all the way up to this over here. And that should be it. So we can submit and it should get accepted. And you could write this in a few other different ways. Uh, but yeah, so this one works out. And thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do let me know what you thought about the video. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. Mm -hmm.